This is Paul Stouter. Join me for a wrap-up of today's sectional pairings on the IHSAA Boys Basketball Tourney Draw Review tonight at 11.15, following the late edition of News Service 18. We've had, this is our 16th game with these guys as we've been here. We've got off to hot, real hard starts. We were very cold. We've been off very hot starts. We hit everything we put up. But the one consistent thing about both teams that's always made this a good game is we've always played hard. We've kept our feelings out of the game. And we played pretty good defense on each other. That makes for a good game. All right, it's another Big Ten game, guys. We've got the, we're still leading this pack, and let's don't let it slip. Together. We attack. Let's go, babe. Let's go, let's go, babe. Let's go. Just your friendly little neighborhood war. Purdue trying to wrap up the Big Ten. Must win to stay ahead of Michigan. Indiana in the top five and hoping to go back to the NCAA tournament. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. I'm Brian Musburger. Nice to have you with us this afternoon. About a year ago, we started to talk about the Hoosiers of Indiana. Championship possibilities, and they went all the way. This time it's another Indiana school, but not these Hoosiers. Pay close attention today to the Boilermakers of Purdue. People on the inside say this team has the chemistry and the coaching staff to go all the way. Only one loss now stands between them and a number one ranking. This was the game in Bloomington, Indiana. It was Dean Garrett with five seconds to go, scoring two of his 31 points that would give the victory to Bob Knight and the Hoosiers. Mel McCants, the Purdue center, says today will be different. I'm going to try to you know, try to just push him out of his range a little bit, and and, uh, and if I can't do that, you know, if he get, does get down to that block, I'm going to try to. Um, just try to front him a little bit and try to get some help from my teammates. And we're going to try to double team him every time he gets the ball. Billy Packer, and that is the battle down low, but the two coaches are hard at it already. You are the best in the business, Brent. The chess match has already started. Bobby Knight has all in his lineup. Gene Cady has matched it by going with three guards. The key to today's game is how these two coaches play this chess match. So if you're a Hoosier fan, be alerted. Keith Smart has returned to the starting lineup. We'll be right back. CBS Sports presents college basketball. Today's game between the Indiana Hoosiers and the Purdue Boilermakers is sponsored by Budweiser. Proud sponsor of the 1988 U.S. Olympic team. This Bud's for you. Delta Airlines. We love to fly and it shows. And by Pontiac Grand Prix, the Motor Trend Car of the Year. Hey, Jimmy. Is that the game? Almost. You gonna watch? Yeah, meet some of the guys across the street. It should be great. The United States hockey team must win. Once every four years, something happens in this country. Once every four years, we all come together. You gotta see this game. Budweiser is proud to help bring the Olympics to America. And Americans closer together. There's a difference when you're flying. Where are we going today? I'm going to Grandma's house. There's someone who shows how much Let's they go care. Play. I'm not going to go anywhere without you. A smile, a tone of voice, and the willingness to try. When you love to fly, it shows. People. Understanding. It's knowing that buying a new house often means finding new ways to save, even if that means bagging your lunch. You want whole wheat or rye? Give me rye. And Allstate can help with a new house discount that could save you 15% on homeowner's insurance. You want mustard or mayo? Mayo. And 15% could buy lots of hot lunches. You want mixed fruit or pudding? Do you want the truth? The Allstate new house discount. <laughs> Another reason. You're in good hands with Allstate. <laughs> If you like to drive, really like to drive, this is what your next car should be. This is the all-new Pontiac Grand Prix. Get on the Pontiac and ride! Pontiac ride! 
This is the 1988 Motor Trend Car of the Year. And that ought to be you driving it. Get on your pony, yeah. We feel the excitement. Mackey Arena, West Lafayette, Indiana, and our defending NCAA champions, the Hoosiers of Indiana, come in here under Bob Knight with their 14th starting lineup. Now Callaway returns to the starting five up front, along with Garrett, who tore Purdue apart down in Bloomington. But here is the small lineup. Knight starts today. The sensational freshman, Edwards, will be in the backcourt. Smart returns his only a second start in the last seven games for the Hoosiers, and Hillman will be there also. And for Gene Cady, who since coming into the Big Ten has enjoyed the best conference record of all the coaches, including Knight, he will counter this way. Mitchell and McCants will start up front, but he too will go small in the backcourt. We'll find out from Billy Packer why. Lewis will be there, along with Stevens. But the change, Tony Jones will start instead of Kip Jones, and Tony is assigned to Keith Smart. So what's the feeling behind Knight's move here, Billy? Well, I think that Keith Smart has handled himself very well while sitting out on the bench, and I think there may be emotional as well as a physical move by putting Smart in there. I'm really surprised that Katie has decided to match him up. Even though Jones is a great athlete, he takes out a lot of size with Kip Jones out of that lineup. I think we'll see a change early, Brent. Purdue in the home white. The Hoosiers in their traveling red, and Garrett set the jump center. Controlled by the Boilermakers. Watch this man, Stevens. Many say he's the best athlete on this Purdue team. There's Jones who has come into the lineup, and Lewis with the game's first shot. But probably the best pure shooter in all of college basketball. And he really extends the defense. They have to be aware of him at all times. Smart. Edwards gets it inside to Garrett on the turn. No shot traveling. That's where Gene Cady would like Garrett. About two steps further out than where he likes to operate from. That's what McCants told us at the top of the broadcast. He'd try to muscle him out if he can. Smart taking the point man, Stevens, for night, And Hillman is over here with Tony Jones. You notice that Hillman is not guarding Jones at all. He's letting him have it outside. McCants. And the Boilermakers start hot. Just exactly opposite of what happened down in Bloomington, where they got way down, 21 points in the first half. Working hard against Garrett on the inside. Callaway has it stolen. Mitchell quickly to the spin, and he's fouled. He'll shoot a pair of free throws as Garrett draws number one, and if Garrett gets into foul trouble, it'll be a long afternoon for Knight and the Hoosiers. I noticed Bob Knight bringing Joe Hillman over in a hurry. Now, what the plan is defensively for Indiana, you can see, is that Hillman to lay off Jones. Jones has not taken a three-point shot all year and try to help out inside, particularly on this fellow right here, Mitchell, who's got a lot of strength. Todd Mitchell from Toledo, Ohio, one of three seniors in this starting lineup for Gene Kelly. This is a very poised team. They are extremely tough in closer overtime games. Their only failure in the last few years has been in the NCAA tournament, unable to advance past the second round. They've dedicated this season to doing something about that. Mitchell missing, but there was a whistle. Lane violation. And the way Garrett is reacting, it's against him. Knight next to Tate's lock. His first boss, whom he has brought back as an assistant coach. He hired him as an assistant at Army. And then when Locke left, Knight was elevated to the top spot there. Interesting that Tates has worked for both Jerry Tarkanian, now his assistant, and Bob Knight. Two yeah. of the winningest guys in college basketball. Given a second chance, Mitchell makes good. And after the made free throw, they go to the pressure or the red defense for Katie. Saw the great speed of Jones getting back on defense. Track star in high school. Good pressure defense. Garrett short on the turnaround. And a rebound by the Boilermakers. If there is a weakness with this Purdue team, as you eye the field of 64 and the road to Kansas City, Katie's team, not the strongest rebounding team. You know, when people talk about Bob Knight on the sidelines, nobody works the sidelines like Gene Katie. 
And if you think he resembles a football player, he was. <laughs> I'll tell you about his days with the Pittsburgh Steelers as the afternoon unfolds. Garrett hits him for two now, down real low. There's the, the difference. There was Garrett's range. You know, that 10 foot on in. Good defense by Callaway. Well, he got over there. But he got a body up on him. And the foul is called against Knight Suzer. You can see Mitchell taking the spin on him right away, taking away that baseline drive. I thought Callaway really moving his feet to get over there in time. Inbounds pass to Mitchell. Short, but an offensive tap in and a field goal for Mel McCants, number 35. This is an awful small team that Indiana has on the floor right now. It may have to come back with some size. One that is struggling. McCants reaching over Garrett that time. I mentioned the frustration that Purdue has experienced in the NCAA tournament. In fairness to them, they were sent to a couple of very tough places. Memphis, losing to Memphis State. Down to Baton Rouge, eliminated by LSU. So what happens last year? They go to Syracuse. They don't have to play the Orangemen, and they lose to Florida. So it's not always a schedule. Inside, low, smart, missing. Good defense, McCants rebounding. Here come the Boilermakers. You've got to be impressed by the chemistry of this Purdue team. Hillman way out on Lewis. Have to play him the minute that he crosses half court. Stevens from Evanston Township High School buries one on the baseline. And likewise for Stevens. Very much underrated player in the national scene. Probably the best NBA prospect on their club. Now Garrett will go to work again. It's like Garrett versus the five pointer makers so far. You notice how he got McCants again, Brent, down inside 10 feet. McCants has to push him out a little bit. Switch on defensive assignments now. Let's see if Indiana switches back. Hillman now on Stevens. Automatic switch. Knocked away from McCants by Callaway and fouled as he comes up. Hillman fouled him that time. And he'll shoot a pair. Well, here's an interesting story, Brent. Bobby Knight's first recruit out of California was a big scorer in high school. 44 a game in California. He has come into this program and has become basically a defensive player and a feeder. And in the opinion of many, he was the key man down the stretch against Syracuse. All hail Keith Smart, and well, you should if you're a Hoosier fan. He did the scoring, but Hillman ran the floor that night down in New Orleans, and he ran it extremely well. well the, the point on that, obviously, is with Alford being the man that they'd want to go to first, if a Smart had been in the ball game, he would have had to be feeding instead of being the recipient of the pass. So Hillman really was the key instrument there. So they took Callaway out, and they operated with Smart and Hillman, of course, along with Alford. Set up the full court pressure. Challenge. This is Smart coming in with that great skill of his. You knew he was going to challenge McCants all the way, and that's great to have, be able to go over the top of the press and have a man of that ability to take it to the hoop. Jones setting the table this time. The dish to McCants. Missing Callaway. Strong rebound. Rangers have been digging uphill since we began. Packing back in on Garrett. Not a good shot. Garrett couldn't find an open cutter, so he took it himself. And now Lewis dishes off, and McCants stays with it. And on the other side, it's Mitchell. He'll come to the line. He wanted the three-point play, but the field goal effort would not fall. And for Garrett, his second personal. Bob Knight has some problems, uh, Grant, with this lineup and the fact that Garrett's not going to have any size help on the inside. You can't give a team as good as Purdue this many chances to go back up on the board. Here comes the third and then a fourth. Good hands by Mitchell, powerful individual. It's a matter of not enough power in there. Well, Garrett is carrying the load offensively, and they're asking him to do it defensively, and Purdue is crashing hard into the inside. Katie's obvious strategy is to try and draw fouls from Dean Garrett, and he is accomplishing that so far. Now, the Hoosiers have taken only six shots, and Garrett has squeezed the trigger four times. 
they must get a Callaway or a Hillman or even an Edwards into this offense. Still trapping out of this press. Now the freshman Edwards looking for it. Creates it on his own and Smart couldn't follow up. Does he have the vertical leap or not? Came from about 12 feet up to the rim on that one. The White Stone says it's impossible for a fellow to have a 40-inch vertical leap. <laughs> I think we ought to test Smart one of these days. Working the baseline. Turnover. Hillman, Smart on his left. Left hand Beautiful. layup and a yeah. pretty play. Boy, he can really finish the fast break, can he? Jay Edwards likewise. Just not playing Jones. Jones has to pick up a little slack. Knocked away by Callaway. McCants comes up. Goes. That's three. That's where it hurts you not to have enough size in there because Garrett's trying to do too much by himself. Smart tries to come over the back, doesn't have it. McCants with excellent hands inside goes up. That might have been a charge, Brent. Garrett was there, had his hands up. McCants went right through his arms, and that's a big third foul for Indiana. And he will have to leave right now. A critical moment as Todd Jadlow steps into the lineup for Knight. Now, here is where the absence of one Daryl Thomas will truly begin to tell. So much has been made throughout the year about Steve Alford gone for the Hoosiers. But the coaching staff feels that it is the loss of Thomas that has really affected this team's chemistry. It's the same old line I fall for every time. Just as good, only cheaper. So, it's five minutes before the market closes. I'm on the phone, waiting for it to ring, watching my hair turn gray. Waiting. I can't get through. Without AT&T, you're twice as likely to get a busy circuit. One of these days, you'd think I'd learn. AT&T's Worldwide Intelligent Network. Because we know it's not just long distance. It's your business on the line. AT&T, the right choice. Of all the cars that come out each year, only one can be the Motor Trend Car of the Year. For 1988, that one is this one. The hot new Pontiac Grand Prix. Get on your Pontiac and ride! Pontiac ride! The new Grand Prix, Motor Trends Car of the Year. You've got to drive it. Get on your pony and rebuild excitement. When the heat's on, motor oil viscosity can break down. To help keep your engine cool, trust Haviland Supreme. The motor oil is cool under fire. Haviland's viscosity booster helps protect engines against wear under extreme heat and stress. Haviland Supreme, cool under fire. Well, this may be the afternoon for Purdue. They lead Indiana by eight, and meanwhile, the top-ranked team, Temple, trailing North Carolina, 34-29. The feeling of many that if Temple loses and Purdue wins, then the Boilermakers will go to first. Last year, Keith Smart hit the most famous 18-footer in Indiana history against Syracuse to give them a national championship. He had a great tournament, didn't he? Scoring 21 against Syracuse. He had 21 against Duke, 20 against Auburn, and against Auburn, a record 15 assists. There was the shot. And the reaction on the Hoosier bench. And there is Daryl Thomas coming into your screen. One of the significant losses, along with Steve Alford for Bobby Knight. So it is not the Hoosiers in Indiana, but the Boilermakers who are suddenly the focus and the conversation piece as we approach the road to Kansas City. Brent India has to change their offense now, not going inside so much, but looking to get something on the perimeter. So look for Jay Edwards here to get more involved offensively. Being guarded by Stevens. Stevens doing a superb job on him so far, we might add. Smart hustles down Great the hustle. ball. Callaway. Over here on the left, this is Edwards, the freshman, looking for the three. And the rebound is yanked down by Steve Shuffler, the reserve center who backs in. 
And the Boilermakers turn it over. That was an excellent try, though, by Stevens. He didn't make a good pass, but it was a good thought. And Mitchell, surprisingly, you very seldom see a, a man get an open basket against Indiana because their transition on defense is excellent. But Edwards was wide open. Uh, Mitchell was right, wide open. Edwards cuts. Trying to take charge, a freshman who will step up, and that's his first field goal here. There was the open offense, and with Edwards and Smart both moving in there, it'll be tough to handle them. But their problem is going to be on the defensive end with this small team out here. Lewis. And Indiana comes down with the rebound. You see Scheffler in the game gives them some more size and power. Even though McCants sits down, probably just to take a little rest. Smart. Missing. Lewis rebounding. Edwards back defensively. No easy layup. Here's Scheffler against Jadlow. Hits the left-handed shot. There is a hard-working guy who was recruited as a defensive tackle out of high school and comes in here and potentially playing on the number one team in the nation. Bench press is over 350. Football coach Freddie Akers down in front of us. Wondering if maybe he can coax him back to play a little defensive tackle. I thought it was nice when they asked his wife about wh whether she liked Purdue or Texas better. She said, I look better in black. <laughs> then what is it, burn orange down there at Texas? Ryan Burney checking in, and he will test a back spasm. Now, Fred, this is a very tall lineup now. You've got Kip Jones in there, Scheffler, and Burning. So, tall team for Purdue. Katie goes size against Knight. Getting the ball to Jadlow, but they had turned it over. Couldn't ask for a better pass. Purdue has already out-rebounded Indiana here this afternoon, 8-3, to three, and they lead it by eight points. In the first game, Indiana had the big lead in rebounding. <laughs> Edwards doing a nice job hanging on to Lewis. He gets caught the switch there. Smart, overly aggressive against Stevens. His first personal. And the team sixth. Apparently, Indiana loves to do a lot of switching down on the baseline. You can see Purdue's offense is running a situation where they're running a lot of screens down in low. Very difficult to stay with uh, Lewis in that situation. Knight starting to work the referees over on the far side. Nobody coming to the ball. Bruning a good shooter. Shuffler again inside, muscling another field goal. Now Jadlow just was outbodied on that play. Scheffler got great position. That final ingredient for a champion, a bench. Now it's Hillman. Good change off the pass. Jadlow. He's comfortable there for that range. Good outside shooter. Stevens. That shot. What a good break for Purdue. How often do you see that? Guy takes it and shoots an air ball. If you've got heads up deep uh, offensive rebounding, you put it right back in. Not getting a lot of screens for Edwards so far. Oh, Shadlow going to the glass up on Scheffler. Well, they're going to call that on Jadlow, but really he was fouled also on the play. Small lineup has got Indiana really into bad foul trouble, hasn't it? You know, they, they just are being overpowered on the inside. They have to do too much reaching and pushing to get the ball. And with them over the limit, Peru will come down and begin shooting the one-on-one. -on -one. You think, what does Bobby Knight have to counter with? He's got Steve Isle coming up right now off the bench. Try to get a little bit more size in the lineup. He can't come back with Garrett here for the rest of the half. So he's really got a problem. Knight was honest yesterday when he arrived for the shoot-around in the early evening. He said, if Garrett gets into foul trouble for me early, it is possible that we will be blown out. He said, this is a very good Purdue team, and they are extremely well coached. back in he was fouled burning his first Scheffler and, and Kip Jones uh, really aren't the guys you want on that foul line very often Jones shooting under 50 percent Scheffler right at 63 Mitchell coming in and Bernie sits down for the Boilermakers 
What really helps, too, as far as Gene Cady is concerned, is he can rest McCants, keep him out of foul trouble the entire half if he needs to. Knocked away by Mitchell and out of bounds. Iowa wanted smart. And what cut in and give help? What's the problem here? You see, Purdue does not guard the man taking the ball out of bounds, which gives them one extra defender. They break Hillman. They got Kip Jones up in the air and then hit the layup, his first field goal. So it's 22-14. If Jones was thinking there, he knows Hillman's not a great leaper, so he could have just stayed on his feet. Jones can get off the ground. Stevens battling for the rebound. And Scheffler commits his first personal. Steven. And that's four against Purdue. Stevens' Billy? shot selection has really not been good here in the first half. Particularly when you take in consideration Scheffler has been able to get good position. You know, they might as well go inside while they can attack there. Billy, you have seen Michigan. How does Purdue compare with Michigan? Well, that was an excellent basketball game, uh, you know, when they played. I think Purdue has just enough size for Michigan. And one of the things that Purdue is so good at is when it gets down the last four or five minutes of the ball game, they can really work that clock. Katie practices that time situations. Watched him yesterday. It's great play there by Smart. Cutting off the roll. And it's 22-16. So with Garrett on the bench, the Hoosiers have dug in. They lob deep to Mitchell, and Smart reaches to slap it away. Chad really working on McCants. Mitchell. Rebound by Hillman. And the Hoosiers are hustling their way back into this one. They may have to get Troy Lewis back in his ball game to start hitting something from outside. Chad Lowe travel. Well, we've got a television timeout. Knight unhappy with that turnover. That's the time remaining in the first half. If you like to drive, really like to drive, this is what your next car should be. This is the all-new Pontiac Grand Prix. Get on your Pontiac and ride! Pontiac ride! This is the 1988 Motor Trend Car of the Year. And that ought to be you driving. Get on your Pontiac! We build excitement! Up here, you catch them with experience. And when you've got them where you want them, you head for the beer that goes down smooth as a mountain stream. Push. How are those horses doing? What horses? <laughs> head for the mountains of Bush beer. <laughs> really knows how your skin got sensitive. But if it is, try the shave cream with more advanced lubricants than any other. Gillette Foamy for sensitive skin. Trust your car's performance to luck, and someday it just may bite the hand that doesn't feed it. Give your car the good life with STP gas treatment. Two guards, one named Isaiah. The other called Magic, a matchup made in heaven. Next. From the MACD Arena in West Lafayette, Indiana, I'm Brian Musburger along with Billy Packer, the Boilermakers leading Indiana 22 to 16. North Carolina and Temple go to the half with the Tar Heels leading Temple 39-34. The Owls rank number one. They were beaten at Las Vegas if they lose to Carolina and Purdue wins, then everyone expects the Boilermakers to move to number one in the AP poll for the first time in the history of this school. Now, Gene Cady has accomplished a great deal since coming here in 1980, but their failures in the NCAA tournament have dampened what the public at large thinks about this basketball program. But it's a good one. The team is dedicated to doing something against it. And Troy Lewis hits the shot. That extends the Boilermakers' lead. It's his first field goal of the game. Now, Gene Caney wants a three-pointer on that, and I believe that it was. Now, he has the right to go to the scorer's table and, and question that. It has only been awarded two. Keith Smart reinserted back into Coach Knight's starting lineup, along with Callaway, who hits his first field goal of the game. 
We'll take a look at that on replay. Our producer Bob Dikas indicates that it may well have been. We'll check on it here shortly. Lewis off a of fake. Short and Hillman rebounding for Knight. You notice Lewis does not have the great athletic ability for that quick step, but because his jump shot is so good, you've got to play him tight. Enables him uh, without that quickness of foot speed to be able to still go by you. Smart cutting and weaving inside. Goaltending is what the crowd wanted. Niles stayed with that one and hit his first field goal. Purdue, despite the fact that Dean Garrett is out for Indiana with three fouls, cannot shake the Hoosiers. McCants is fouled by Hillman. Let's take a close look at this, Billy. What did it show? Without question, he's behind the three-point line. It should have been a three-point shot. None of the officials uh, called it at all. And Gene Cady should have gone right up to the sidelines. See, he's way, he's a foot behind the three-point line. Not one of the officials, of course, the, the fell under the basket's not his responsibility, but that should have been a three-point play. There he is. He's a good six inches behind the line, no question about it. I guess my question is, how can all three officials miss that? Well, the responsibility, obviously, was the official right uh, to his immediate right. Should have been right on top of it. Wasn't even a tough call. McCants gets a roll. So far, McCants with 10 points, three rebounds. He's perfect at the free throw line. Remember, Dean Garrett ate him up down in Bloomington with 31 points, including the game winner. In that game, Purdue trailed by as many as 21 and came back to take the lead three times. But you know what's interesting? I talked to Dan Dockett the other day, a former member of one of Bob Knight's uh, top ball clubs. Dan said, though, even when Purdue was down 21, he could see with a look in their eyes that they felt they would get back into the ball club, which is back into the game, which is a mark of a great ball club. Purdue goes zone. Crashing inside is foul. 2-3 zone with McCants right in the middle. And this may mean it's time for Jay Edwards to get back into the ball game to extend that defense a little bit. Because on this uh, floor right now, Indiana does not have a real three-point shooter. First foul on Mitchell. I'm watching Bobby Knight and see, here he goes. <laughs> He's going right over to Edwards. I said it would be a chess match. A coach goes to his own. Next coach comes back with his weapon. The first free throw shot here this afternoon by Indiana, and it's missed. Purdue is 7 of 10 at the line. Purdue gets to the line a lot more than its opponents. Don't think it's just the refereeing here this afternoon. Purdue has shot 200 more free throws than the teams they have played all season long. A lot of reasons for that, Brent. One is this offense that they run. They get good shots. They make you really work in on the interior. There's a great pass. On the turnover, though, he couldn't get the handle. Hillman. Look at Edwards. Cross to Edwards. That was great reaction by Jones to realize where Edwards was. Hillman looking to set the table all the time. Now it's smart off the cut, and he gives it up, and Isle is there. Pretty play by the Hoosiers, wasn't it? Keith Smart did not have his eyes closed on these games. He was sitting on the bench. He is playing very well today in every facet of the game. You've got to be impressed the way Indiana hanging tough here without Dean Garrett. Purdue might have relaxed with the big man out. McCants will come up to the line as Jadlow is whistled for his second personal. Stevens really having an off first half here for him, and he has played extremely well this year. Well, you're looking at two guys on this starting lineup, made uh, preseason all Big Ten first team. And Stevens coming right behind on the third squad. Along with McCann. So this, this club is highly thought of by the Big Ten coaches. Wasn't exactly clean, but they count the same. Harold did recruit when he showed up uh, here at Purdue. Outstanding high school player in Chicago. that one Isle pulls it away and this is Edwards silky smooth is the way they describe Edwards the freshman giving it to Hillman wide open that time great movement on the inside and you can see because Edwards is such a good shooter he extends the defense out which allows plenty of room and spacing on the inside for Indiana to make their cuts well, there's a talent advantage for Purdue, but in terms of hustle, Indiana's had it here the last few minutes, and that's enabling them to stay in the game. 
They take it away defensively again. The trademark of a night coach team. Jones never saw Jad low behind him when he went up for that shot. Smart glide oh, goes to the left glide. hand. He explodes inside. Stevens from the corner, and Purdue regains the lead. That was a great comeback by Stevens. He looked as if he was going through, and when Smart looked for the switch, Stevens peeled back, and that's why he was wide open for the jumper. Hillman, short, McCants. Wanted Mitchell, but turned it over. Stevens just didn't have the angle for that pass. He had the right idea, but no angle. So that is four turnovers for KD's team. We've got a timeout, television break, and we'll be right back. Volkswagen engineers have developed a remarkable fuel injection system, which gives our Jetta 17% more horsepower than before. Of course, there are those Volkswagen engineers who believe they've developed something no less remarkable. The brakes. Lease a 1988 Jetta for only $139 a month at your participating Volkswagen dealer. Ever since your post office invented express mail overnight delivery, others have tried to copy our Eagle. But it's not so easy. Because express mail has overnight reliability that's close to perfect, the most convenient locations, and prices as low as $10.75. Most others charge you about twice that. So if you want a combination of low prices, convenience, and reliability no one can imitate, use the original express mail service from your post office. There's no place on earth that I'd rather be than out in the open where it's all plain to see. If it's gonna get dark, it's up to you and to me. There's no place that I'd rather be. Head for the mountains of bush. Head for the mountains of bush. Be Dobie Gillis is back, but why is the whole town out to get Dobie? The brakes don't work. Dwayne Hickman, Bob Denver, bring me the head of Dobie Gillis tonight. 14,123, and you can't find an empty seat here in the house that Rick Mount fills. Do you remember Rick? What a great scorer he was here at Purdue. Their all-time leading scorer with more than 2,300 points, 932 points in a single season. And he has passed along one of his familiar trademarks. His son, Rich Mount, is now a 6'3", junior guard at Lebanon High School. And that jump shot familiar out there? The average is 26 per game, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he wore those same colors here at Purdue. <laughs> you know what's interesting, Brett? Mike Newell, the coach at Arkansas Little Rock, is the man who holds the record, however, in the Mackey Arena for scoring. He hit uh, in the 50s, 54 points, I think, in here one time in a high school ball game. And the storyline is Garrett, with those three fouls, went out with Indiana down 16-8. And now look at what's happened. The Hoosiers have hustled their way right back into this game. And they're in that little matchup 2-3 zone. Have to be aware of Edwards in this zone. Callaway. Here he is. Over to Edwards. The three. He hits the home run, and Indiana jumps back ahead. He's made 20 of 32 three-point shots in the last five games. I'd say you better be aware of him. Freshmen are supposed to be inconsistent. Well, of course, he was inconsistent academically in the first semester. Bob Knight made him sick, but he hasn't been since he's come back. Sloppy turnover. Callaway can't keep it, but the foul is called as Jones went down. I'm not sure the official had a good angle on that. He was in a foot race. Yeah, he was more alongside Jones than he was ahead of him to make that call. Jones, a great wide receiver in high school, had nine TDs his senior year. He's an aviation major. He yep. can fly his own airplane. The airport is right here on this campus. In fact, Amelia Earhart, on her ill-fated voyage, took off from this airport, which is about five minutes from this arena. 
Maybe less than that, Brent, when you're trying to make it to the airport tonight. <laughs> we will make it. <laughs> Edwards. Oh, my. There's a young man who with his teammate Jones. Uh, only two fellas. Only before has a high school won three straight Indiana State Championships, and there are two guys that were on those clubs. Some show. Did it. Look out, look out. Stevens whips one to Lewis. Now that's senior leadership. Stevens, Lewis, and of course Mitchell. Using that left hand on the dribble. Now Callaway trying to get involved in the offense. Hans yanks his miss away. Indiana may have to take a little time off the clock, Brent. This game getting to him a little bit right now in this stretch. You can feel the momentum swinging to Purdue. Lewis and Stevens was there for the rebound, and he misses. He's having a rough first half. See, uh, see Bobby Knights, he's telling the club, take a little time off this clock, and he can feel it too. Want to move the ball and make Purdue work some. Indiana's hit seven of its last ten. Make it eight of eleven. I'm not sure Knight wanted that shot, but you'll always take it. And boy, what a good-looking shooter that freshman is. I think Edwards gave Jones a little peace of mind, too, when he came down off that jumper. McCants backing in, muscling Jadlow. You that was Heil, actually, who was backing in. Let me correct that. You can't let a wide body like that get down in such a low post position. McCants only had to make one dribble and get himself right in position to make a two-footer. What a difference. Of course, you can't have big stats when you're sitting on that sidelines for a good portion of the half with three fouls. Well, let me say that Indiana was too dependent on Garrett, my observation, at both ends of the floor. And with him over there, they have played a better team concept. And you would think that if Bob keeps him out for the first half when he comes back in the second half, he can fit in here, too. What might have happened to Purdue also is that getting him on the bench, they may have relaxed mentally a little bit. Your Bob Knight is down two. You want to stay there. Is that another walk? Foul oh. is called on Shepard. Well, Jadlow did not have quick feet. There's no reason to commit a foul on him that far from the basket. He's a good outside shooter, but when he puts it on the ground, there's plenty of time to react. Jadlow and teammate Keith Smart played against each other in junior college ball. Well, interesting, Jadlow was a 4-0 student in junior college. He was a two-time All-Stater in Kansas. There's some talk that, uh, you know, he went to junior college because he wasn't recruited heavily by the type of schools he thought he was capable of playing in. Bobby Knight came in and captivated him, and, of course, Larry Brown loved to have him back at Kansas right now. Good shooting stroke. That should never happen, not that way, for the simple reason that pass wasn't even that well thrown. Callaway not looking. Big break. Katie wanting that loose ball. What a spinner by Edwards. Loose. This should be easy. Uh, Brett, what's creating this is when Edwards goes one-on-one, -on -one, in this case, Smart has got the pull back for defensive balance because there's nobody back there with a bigger lineup to, to handle anybody on the fast break. And Callaway's going to the boards. Pelkowski's going to the boards. Jadlow's going to the boards. So Edwards goes and makes his move. Smart has got to rotate back for defensive balance. Ryan Sloan replaces Pelkowski. And he replaced him based on that lob pass that was thrown right over Pelkowski's head. Bob Knight explaining that to him. In no uncertain terms. He'll take you out much quicker for a defensive lapse than an offensive shooting mistake. And he'll never take you out for an effort. And there was a case where there's just a mental breakdown. Jay Edwards. 
been the hot Hoosier here so far, keeping them in the game with his shooting. He scored eight of Indiana's last ten. You know, Brett, when you think about those kids winning three straight championships at Marion, Indiana, when everybody in the state is in that tournament in every division, it's quite an accomplishment. And so many fine high school basketball teams throughout this state of Indiana, too. Stevens puts it down. Can't get it to fall in the first half. First on Sloan. Indiana foul on 45. If you're Bobby Knight, though, you've got to be pretty happy with this first half to have your ace on the bench for just about the entire way and still be right in the ball game. The Hoosiers seven and five in the Big Ten and Purdue ten and one. And started out of the box, winning only one of their first six. Stevens, a superb high school player up in Evanston, a suburb right north of Chicago. So with the game tied at 38 and 357 to go, we'll take a timeout. Let's take a little ride in a road car from Mazda. I think you're going to be surprised. It's got all the right hardware. No surprise there. Electronic fuel injection, overhead cam engine, four-wheel independent suspension. It even has the best warranty in its glass. Guess what? It's the Mazda 323, a road car that also happens to be today's best value in a small family sedan. I like surprises like this. No one really knows how your skin got sensitive. But if it is... Try the shave cream with more advanced lubricants than any other. Gillette Foamy for sensitive skin. Wherever they are, Sylvania engineers are obsessed with light bulbs. So our research team found a way to make this soft white bulb last 50 hours longer than any other at no extra cost. It was a real breakthrough. Sylvania, where the best comes to light. Dear Dad, we made our toughest jump yet at dawn. I was kind of nervous. We all were. And then I remembered when you told me that real courage is putting your fear aside and doing your job. You see, Dad, here in the Army, the things I'm learning will help me get the most out of life and the best from myself. Dad, we were really something today. I know you'd be proud. With Billy Packer, and I'm Brent Musburger, and Jim Nance joining us today, and I'm sure, Jim, that you enjoyed Brian Bartano's gold medal last night as much as we did watching on television. What you got planned for us at halftime? All right, we've got a full lineup here at halftime, Brent. Of course, we'll check the scoreboard, plus we'll hear from some of the combatants from yesterday's flare-ups on the basketball floor. We'll also explore the issue of what it takes to qualify this year for March Madness. That's all coming up halftime on the College Basketball Report. Let's go back to Brent. All right, Jim, thank you. In case you have not seen those two ugly incidents from yesterday, uh, Jim coming up with them at halftime. Hopefully no one was injured, but there were some nasty punches thrown, and we'll look into them. One involving Georgetown, Pittsburgh. The other was Louisville and South Carolina. All right, Indiana coming down on the attack now, Billy. One of the things that you can do against a team that does not guard you out of bounds like that is to go ahead and throw the ball on the sideline, step a man out, and then change up their defense completely. That's twice today. Indiana's had a hard time getting the ball in bounds. Edwards did a good defensive job that time on Stevens, didn't he? After Callaway had hit his second field goal of the game, and Knight is up complaining to the officials. Oh. And he gets a foul on one of his own players. I thought for a moment he was going to wheel on Knight and call the technical. Now, He's got Knight is holding the ball here, and he <laughs> thought better of doing anything other than handing it over. His buddy, John Havlicek, probably said that's the second pass Bobby Knight's ever thrown in his life. <laughs> in college, he didn't play defense and never wanted to pass. Now he teaches defense and makes you pass. Sheffler comes away, and this is Lewis. Sheffler's got those hands taped up. He looks like a heavyweight fighter, doesn't he? Setting some solid screens in there. McCants can't get the roll. And the foul goes against Purdue, and that's Sheffler's third. 
Well, after our NCAA action, NBA basketball. There's a former Hoosier on the left, Isaiah Thomas, and of course he used to duel against Michigan State where Magic Johnson played his college basketball. Detroit against Los Angeles, the Lakers and the Pistons. Some say that's a preview of the NBA championship. Larry Bird says, don't be too sure about that. What's interesting there, too, is uh, those two fellas are very good friends and have been for a long, long time. Off the court. Jadlow has played nicely off Knight's bench here with Garrett sitting down. That's five points and a pair of rebounds. And defensively, he's done what his coach wanted. I really think that Purdue has gone into a mental lapse with Garrett out of the ball game. They really haven't gotten their offense in sync at all. Now here they go, their little box. And they're just not giving Lewis any opportunity to get off his jump shot. A lot of movement here by Purdue. And that defense right with them. They force Mitchell to the outside where he misses, but they get the roll, and Tony Jones draws the foul, and he'll shoot a pair of free throws. That's the first personal by Edwards. Now, Brent, one of the things that was so good about Purdue being an experienced team, they went to that offensive structure right there. They moved the ball. They kept their spacing out there. And one of the things you get when you get in an offense like that is an opportunity to have good offensive rebounding, which is what they had. Nine Jones. to two, huh? Jones, the sophomore out of Fort Wayne. <laughs> 17 free throws shot by Purdue so far in the first half to eight by the Hoosiers. Fella had eight rebounds against Iowa. Changed their press up a little bit. And the man to man. Turns it over. And then gets back defensively, and traveling is the call. Well, you see so often that the referee automatically calls when a man falls down, but I felt that Lewis was already on the ground and wasn't taking advantage of his position. Here's Jones with his great ability inside. He's so strong. Now, let's see if he's not already down. See, he's down on the ground. He did not fall, did not gain any advantage. Purdue lost one on that one. Edwards is so good using that left hand. Indiana really makes you work when you're on defense. They stay with that pattern so well. Smart travel. Boy, and with a lead, you don't need to make that kind of turnover. Katie going crazy with the ref. Purdue comes up with it. Stevens wanting a three-pointer. Lewis doesn't get it for him across court. Foul down away, and it's against Chatlow and Knight is furious. He may get a tee on this one. Knight he, is yep, furious. He's going to get one on this one. But that, that was coming. Katie's going to get one before this game is over, Trent. Just to balance things up. Can't hits the technical. Now let's think of this this spread in the score right here because this will be a two-shot technical. Ball out of bounds, obviously, and the foul inside. Knight still wanting a word with Ted Hillary, and he sent Keith Smart out for a conversation. This can be a six-point turnaround. Oh, no question about that being a foul. Jadlow was holding him before it was ever taking place. Good call by the official. Jadlow saying why. And 
the ball out of bounds, Brent. Bob better go sit back down right here, as hot as he is. There's no purpose to bury your team in a hole a little bit further. And Purdue gets the ball, too. As they regain the lead here, and they Set go play. low to Mitchell, but they couldn't put it away. That would have been a big emotional lift for the Boilermakers. Mackey Arena would have exploded if they had hit that dunk. Now watch Katie the rest of the half. He's going to work these officials real hard trying to get one of his own. Now McCants on the inside, his second personal. We should not overlook McCants' offensive contribution so far. That's 17 points scored by the Boilermaker center. So with Dean Garrett out, Bob Knight has been hurt defensively, and he continues to bark at the officials from out in front of the Indiana bench. Short on the free throw. But one of the reasons the Kansas has been able to have such a big half is the fact that they're playing outside so tough on the three-point shooters. There's a lot of room for them to operate inside. The three by Stephen. And that time, Indiana packed their defense back in, and Purdue counters with a good three-point shot. Suddenly, since that technical, the Boilermakers have regained control. They're up by five. Dadlow not too quick with his feet, is he? Doesn't pivot very well. Callaway gets loose on the inside. Back to three. Got a chance for a last shot right here. Purdue spreads you out as well as anybody in the country. Whether they've got the three-guard lineup or not, Stevens and Lewis are very good at this offense. Jones. Final shot time, and Smart will have to hurry. Oh, he's got it. yes. A three by Keith Smart. But, Brent, if you're playing against Indiana, you're not going to let Smart or Edwards get this shot off. They had him double team, but there's that vertical leap of his going over everybody and burying it for three. When you want a hero, dial smart. The end of the first half with the score, Purdue 49, Indiana 47. Jim Nance will reach.